What's up guys, welcome back to the 5 and 5 series and today we have part 2 of the training edition and we have 5 very good questions to get through so let's get stuck into it. Question number 1, what is more beneficial, front squats or back squats? Now I think there is definitely a place for both of these exercises but I mainly wanted to cover the benefits of a front squat today because I think everybody listening and watching has a fair idea of the benefits of a back squat but with front squats, in my opinion, they're fantastic for basically forcing you to squat properly, teaching you the right squat form because you can get away with bad form on a back squat and still get through the rep even though you're not doing it properly. Whereas a front squat really teaches you to keep your chest up, drive your knees out, stay tight through the core. It's an amazing exercise for your abs and for your core. Um, obviously it does target the quads a little bit more so than the back squat and not as much of the glutes but in my opinion it is one of the best exercises you can do for your lower body and if you're struggling with back squats Try throwing in front squats for you know two to three months and then go back to back squats and see the differences and see if you feel like you've benefited um, from throwing those front squats in because that's what I did and it made a world of difference for me. Second question is what is more beneficial, barbell or dumbbell? On exercises, and there is a place for both. Again, a similar answer. With barbell, you're going to be able to load up more weight, so over time it's going to be easier to progressively overload, which when we talk about strength increases, muscle increases and whatnot, getting stronger, progressive overload is the key. So in that respect, barbell is probably on top. But if you feel like you have a muscle imbalance or you feel like um, you know, you're not using the perfect form with a barbell, then dumbbells are a fantastic way. And they're also extremely good for the stabilizer muscles um, in your shoulders and whatnot. So I would recommend keeping a balance of both. But in terms of that compound lift, that first lift, if you don't have any muscle imbalances, if you don't have any reasons why you can't use barbell, I would recommend sticking to barbell to start the session get your compound movements out of the way and then throw in some dumbbell work towards the end. Whether that be alternating, you know, single arm or single leg or whether that be things like dumbbell chest press or shoulder press where you're just having to utilize those stabilizer muscles a little bit more. Um, either way, you're going to get benefit out of both. But for the heavy compounds, try and stick to barbell if you can. Third question is what is the best warm up for before a lower body workout? Now. This is what I do, this works for me and it, you know, this is something that I try and teach a lot of my clients as well so feel free to give this a go and see if it's the right thing for you. Everybody has a different approach but for me, I like to go into the gym, get on the foam roller, do a couple of minutes of myofascial release because realistically you're not actually going to do much release work, it's more so about just getting the blood flowing and getting some blood into that muscle and trying to loosen it off a little bit so a couple of minutes of myofascial release on a foam roller spiky ball, the cross ball, whatever you're using. After that, I'll then do mobility for lower body. So it's like getting mobility through the lower back, the ankles, um, just making sure everything's nice and loose. And then after that, I'll go into activation. First of all, I'll do activation with the band for the glutes and the hamstrings. I'll do two to three exercises there and then I'll do some warm up sets on whatever my first exercise is. Really focusing on, not, not focusing on heavy weight obviously in the warm up, but just really focusing on activating the muscles that I want to be using in the working sets. Question number four, in my opinion, what's the best chest exercise? I've actually covered this recently on my email list, but for me, I'm not a big fan of flat bench barbell press because it just it just incorporates too much shoulder for me. Every time I go through a heavy block of bench press um, on the flat bench, I tend to get um, some troubles with my shoulder. They fl shoulders, they flare up a little bit. It aggravates my shoulders, so I, stick, I stay away from that. For me, I find decline bench press to get the best activation of my chest. After that, I'll then do an incline barbell or dumbbell press, and then cable flies. I don't get much out of dumbbell chest flies, but with cables and machines, I get a, um, some great activation of the pecs. So the best exercise for chest, for me anyway, is either a decline or incline barbell or dumbbell press. Last question on today's five and five episode is what is the best glute exercise? Now everybody's gonna have a different opinion, but again, this is my channel, this is my podcast, this is my YouTube channel, so this is my, this is my opinion. And in my opinion, the hip thrust is the best glute exercise. 
if possible, having your upper body slightly elevated and also using load. So a great example is to have your shoulder blades resting on a bench in the gym, using a barbell across your hips with obviously plates on either end to load the exercise, making sure you're tucking your pelvis under before each rep and then driving your hips up as high as you can, squeezing your glutes at the top and making sure that you're getting as much activation as you can. If you have tight hip flexors, you're gonna struggle with this exercise and you're not gonna get the most out of it. But if you can get your pelvis in a neutral position at the top of the exercise and really squeeze your glutes, this is gonna be an amazing exercise for you, not only for your posture, but also to increase you know, your speed, you know, increase your strength and size of the glutes, obviously, but your jumping, your running, all that stuff, and also to eliminate um, lower back pain as well. So that's the five questions today in today's episode of Five and Five. This was part two of the training edition. I hope you have enjoyed today's episode. If you have, make sure you let me know, leave a review, leave a comment below on the YouTube video, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.